In ancient times, it was common practice to copy constellations and nebulae onto the earth and to designate the land as the land of the gods. In Japan, the tombs in the Miyazaki region of Kyushu were built in the shape of the constellation Scorpius, and twice Antares-like tombs were built at the location of the giant star Antares. The two tombs, built about 100 years later both 175 m long, both have a single Antares built on them. Perhaps it was found to be a double star and was rebuilt more accurately. In addition to Antares, there is another holy celestial body floating in Scorpius. It is the Black Tower Nebula near the Poison Needle. This object seems to have been known since ancient times and was called the Palace of God in China. In the constellation of Scorpius in Miyazaki, the Ida Shrine is worshipped at that location. This shrine has long been called the Birthing Mother, and the name of the area is also derived from this name. The site of Ida Shrine is mentioned in the official history books of the ancient Japanese government 8C as the birthplace of Amaterasu, the supreme deity. In the constellation of Scorpius in Miyazaki, Japan, a burial mound similar to Antares. Was built at the location of Antares. The location of the Black Tower Nebula has left place names and ruins related to childbirth. It should be designated as a World Heritage Site. Similar Scorpius beliefs were practiced on the South American continent. Because the northwestern coast of the South American continent resembles the upside-down constellation of Scorpius, the remains were hung upside down at the Sycan site in Peru. The head was severed to resemble a scorpion or Scorpius, and a huge golden arm was spread out and placed in front of the body. Bodies buried in this manner have not been found in other parts of the South American continent, and this is a burial practice found only in Sycan. Why, then, was this burial method found only in Sycan? The reason is that the site was located in the Black Tower Nebula, a sacred place in the constellation of Scorpius. Incidentally, the location of the giant star Antares corresponds to Lake Titicaca, and the island of the sun floating in the lake looks exactly like Antares. This is probably why the island was considered the cradle of the Inca Empire. The civilization of the South American continent was influenced by the constellations, and if so, what about the Central American continent? The Olmec and Mayan civilizations flourished in this region, and the constellations were also greatly related to these civilizations. Olmeca was the earliest civilization to emerge in the Americas, from around 1200 BC to around AD. It is called the Mother Civilization because it became the mother of all subsequent civilizations in Central America. A distinctive feature of the Olmeca site is a megalithic human head statue called the Olmeca Head. They are generally 2 to 3 meters in size, and 17 of them have been discovered so far. These statues are thought to be symbolic depictions of Olmec rulers and important figures. What they all have in common is that their heads are built as if they were wearing helmets. It is not known why it was built this way. The South American continent is similar to Scorpius era, is similar to Yucatan Peninsula. Corona Australis resembles the Gulf Coast. The topography of this area is the same as the heavens. Olmeca, which flourished on the Gulf Coast, had its own country as Corona Australis. The Olmeca head seems to have been created as the image of their god. A similar phenomenon occurred on the Yucatan Peninsula, the Mayan civilization that flourished there the Mayan civilization that flourished there frequently held rituals using altars. After all, the spectacle of the night sky has had a profound impact on our daily lives. Examples are the murals of Egyptian temples and artifact statues. In Egypt, Orion worship was particularly strong, as the three great pyramids copied the three stars of Orion. The figures in the figure are kings and deities, all of which are arrangements of the constellation Orion. Another example is the Moai of Easter Island. Easter Island is an isolated island in the South Pacific Ocean. The island's shape is an isosceles triangle. In the constellation, it is very similar to the constellation Aquarius. The constellation Aquarius represents a boy pouring sake to a god, with the sake flowing down from the jar he carries. The islanders thought that Aquarius, who circled the night sky, was the island's god, and they built Moai with Aquarius design. The constellation Aquarius seems to be on top of the constellation Pisces in the south, and the Moai are also placed on a stone slab called an Ahu. The first Moai did not carry hats, but later Moai began to carry hats called Pukeo. In the constellation chart of Aquarius, the water bottle that the boy is holding up is the same shape, size, and position as the Pukeo. It seems that constellation paintings were introduced to the island and the islanders added water bottles to the Moai as Pukeo. 
The islanders seem to have designed the Moai in the shape of Aquarius in the night sky. The statues were created from the shapes of the constellations. And the same would be true of the Olmeca heads. In modern times, most people think of astrology when they think of constellations, but this was not the case in ancient times. It was the image and residence of God. They were interested in which constellation their own realm was in. Then the Maya civilization, which flourished mainly in the Yucatan Peninsula, must have been aware of their country as era. The Maya civilization had a number of major cities that rose and fell from around 900 BC. Although the city reached its peak in the 8th century, it declined rapidly in the 9th century, and many cities were abandoned. Sacrificial rites were frequently practiced by the Maya civilization, probably due in large part to the underlying awareness that the Yucatan Peninsula was similar to Era. Era is spoken of in mythology as an altar dedicated to the gods for the wolves killed by centaurs. Sacrifices were made mainly of prisoners of war, and the sacrificial rites were performed at high places, such as the tops of pyramids. When the captive was stripped naked and placed on his back, the priest slit the captive's chest with a stone knife, removed his heart, and raised it high to the heavens. The heart was taken away and placed on the belly of a stone statue called a shakmar as an offering to the sun. It is said that more than one million hearts were removed through this ritual. This custom probably occurred because the Mayans were aware that their country was era, just as the Almecs built Almec heads to resemble Corona Australis. Still, what was the idea behind cutting open a living person's chest, grabbing the heart, taking it out, and holding it up to the sun? Where is the need for such cruelty in making sacrifices? The idea was that the human being to be sacrificed would go to God. In other words, society as a whole was convinced of this horrific ritual. There must be some basis for the fact that the removal of a living human heart and offering it to the sun was done with impunity over a long period of time. However, nothing has been revealed about this. The ecliptic, the orbit of the sun, runs through the northern part of Era, and near that line Trifid Nebula, and Lagoon Nebula, are floating. These two nebulae are like living human hearts, and yet, being on the ecliptic, they are truly a sacrifice to the sun. Although this phenomenon is not visible during the day, the existence of the ecliptic was well known in ancient times. The Mayans, who were obsessed with making the celestial spectacle an earthly event, required that the sacrifice to the sun had to be a living human heart. Even in the Americas, the concentration of archaeological sites in Central and South America was due in large part to the fact that the topography resembles a constellation.